Okay, so let's read the side wall of a tire. This is an Eagle F1 tire. Uh, this is a rotational sensitive tire. You can see it tells you here the rotation and direction right there. And we're going to start with the DOT number. The DOT number starts right here. This is for Department of Transportation. This tire is registered. The number is 717R2AVR. So that's the registration number with the Department of Transportation. The next number is very important. This number right next to it is a Julian number. You see here it says 3008. This tire was made on the 30th day of 08. That's the year and the Julian date. That's important. If you go to, Now it's 2011. If you go to buy a tire and you look at it before they mount it, and that tire is more than five years old, don't have them put it on because it's an expired tire. Believe it or not, tires do have an expiration date. They do expire after five years. The tire, the rubber will dry out and the tire is no good. So there's the Julian date. I bought these tires in, in uh, 2010, and now well, let's see, you know, I bought them in 2009. So th this tire was a year old when I bought it. It was built at the beginning of the year, January of 08, this tire was built. So there's your Julian date. That's important. It's always next to the DOT number. Also above that, you see it has a tread wear number, a traction rating, a temperature rating. That's not on all the tires, but there are in some tires. Now here's the size of the tire. This is a 225-45ZR17. It's metric. Sometimes there'll be a P before this. P just stands for P metric, but all the dimensions on tires are metric. This means that the 225 the width of the tire is 225 millimeters on the tread at the widest point, fully inflated with no load. Okay? 45. The height of the tire, the sidewall, this sidewall, is 45% of 225. Now, if it was 50%, it would be easy. If this was 250, the sidewall would be 100 millimeters. But this is 225 millimeters wide. The sidewall is 45% of that. That's the ratio. Z is a load rating or a speed rating. This will tell you what the tire is rated for in speed. Z rated 150, 180 plus. It can be an X, Y, or Z. R stands for radial. It doesn't stand, has anything to do with this. This is a 17 inch diameter tire. R has nothing to do with that. So that's how you read it. 225-45 ZR17. Then there's some other, a 94W, they'll give you some other information on the tire. Very small print here. Sometimes they tell you what to do about loading, overloading, underloading. Uh, we we'll keep on going around. We have here the load plates that are on there. It tells you stuff about the tread, uh, max loading, recommended tire pressure. And then we're going to come around. These are these are serial numbers. There's catalog numbers, how it's listed in the catalog, how it's listed in the system, and it'll often have the green tire number that's built. It's probably a, uh, let's see, this is probably the green tire number, 210-271 uh, is a green tire number. Here's a finished product number. That's probably what those numbers mean. And then you'll have a bunch of real small numbers here. And these are the mold numbers. Uh, mold numbers is usually six numbers. Uh, you, you see here six numbers followed by a bunch of letters. Uh, I'm thinking that this is mold number, looks like num number 81. Uh, and here's the mold number. So you got mold numbers, tells you the extra load. Uh, and it tells you it's a radial tubeless tires and of course the ever famous made in China. Here we have a Goodyear Eagle F1 tire and they're made in China, they're not even made in America anymore. So that's how you read a sidewall. Let me tell you a little bit about what to look for when you're buying the tires. I want to focus on manufacturing defects, what to do when you go to get tires, when you buy tires, what to look for. Now, the first thing you want to do is when you buy tires, if you're buying one, two, three, a whole set, whatever, tell the mechanic, tell the salesperson that you want to look at all of the tires before they mount them to the rims. This is critical because the curing process brings out a lot of manufacturing defects and if the inspectors miss it before it gets out of the plant, it'll end up on your car. Now, all plants pretty much have 100% inspection. The tires get inspected before it goes out of the plant. But anybody who's familiar with the manufacturing processes and quality knows that visual inspection, a human being inspecting, is only about 80% accurate. Now, when you go to buy your tires, the first thing you want to do is look at the bead. You're going to want to put your hand inside the bead, hold the bead, and rub all the way around. When the tire is in the mold, if it shifts, if it doesn't go in straight, if something happens, the rubber will start to flow in different directions, and there won't be enough rubber to fill up the bead area. This is called a hollow bead. So you run your hand around the inside of the entire bead, the entire diameter. You want to make sure it's even thickness all the way around. If you feel a little, a little dip in there somewhere or a little waviness, 
Do not buy that tire. There's not enough rubber in the bead area, and it won't be strong enough. When you, possibly when you go around the curve, it could blow out. That's what causes those kind of problems in the bead area. Then you want to look inside the tire. When you go and get tires, make sure you take a flashlight with you so you can look inside the tire. A lot of times when the tires are being built, and the layers, as you saw, there could be many layers to the tire, when it goes into the curing press, air can get trapped between those layers. And what happens is, as the tire heats up at 350 degrees curing temperature, the air bubbles will work their way out. Sometimes they go through the, through the tread, or sometimes they work their way inside the inner liner, and you get a bubble on the inside. Now, when it gets to the inspector, they don't want to throw away a tire for a simple bubble, so what they do is they pop the bubble, cut out the rubber, and let it go. You can see that on the inside of the tire if you inspect it. You're also looking for any kind of defect, cosmetic or not. Look for little nicks, uh, little pieces of rubber missing, there might be cuts, whatever. Inspect the entire inside of the tire with a flashlight. Now, there are repair processes in the tire, pro uh, tire building and tire industry. Um, and after they're cured, there are some things they can do to repair a tire. For example, if it comes out of the mold and there might be just a little nick in there, what they'll do is they'll clean off the area, they'll put some black wax in there, rub it smooth, and spray some flat black paint on there, or a black ink, something black. It's going to be flat black, so you won't even really see it. So, what you want to do is, when you buy the tire, you rub your hand around the outside real good, look very, very close at the entire outside face of the tire, no defects. You'll be able to see it if you look close enough. So you want to look at both sides. This the outside and the inside of the tire, you want to look at both sides. Look at the tread. Make sure there's no defects in the tread. The tread, they're all the way around. If you have tires and they might have big ones on, big nubs on there, that's no big deal. It's just a different size. Some are micro vented, some are regular vented. But those little nubs sticking up are the rubber being squeezed out through the vents. So that's that's what you, there's no big deal about that. Those come out very, very easy. So when you go buy your tires, be careful, inspect them inside and out, and make sure you're getting what you pay for. Now, I'm going to dispel one myth, and if you run into this, you can have the mechanic or the dealer, whoever, watch this video, and I'll gladly explain to them, have them call me. There's a big myth that sometimes when you're driving down the road and you feel your steering wheel shake and you take the car back to the dealer, hey, or, or the, uh, the place you bought your tires, say, hey, I just bought brand new tires, the front end is shaking. They'll go and say, oh, you know what, one of the belts shifted in your tire. That is a bunch of crap. It's impossible. I'm going to say it again. It is impossible for a belt to shift in a tire. Number one, there aren't any belts in a tire. Number two, if it shifts, the whole tire would fall apart. A green tire, meaning an uncured tire, is like cookie dough mix, like chocolate chip cookie doughs. So if you have chocolate chip cookie dough, you can move the chocolate chips around in the dough. Same thing with a green tire. You can move things around as long as it's uncured. You can push the tread around, you can move components around, and at that point, yeah, things will move around. But once this goes into a mold, it sits in a curing press for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, at 350 degrees, it goes through the vulcaniz vulcanization process, it is cured solid, just like a cookie. When you bake it, it's finished, it's complete. It is impossible for a chocolate chip to move inside a finished cookie. So you bake a cookie, break it open, there's, there's absolutely no way that the chocolate chips are going to move around. When you cook a tire, there's absolutely no way anything in here is going to shift. What happened is, when you were driving the new tire, you wore off enough of the rubber to expose a manufacturing defect. It could be a bad splice by the tire builder, it could be a bad material supplied to the tire builder that he never knew was there. It could be something in the curing process, maybe a piece of metal or something got in there. There's, there's a million things it could be. I've seen thousands of different reasons why you would have a manufacturing defect. There's no x-ray process, so it could, it, it, it's something the inspector wouldn't see because he wouldn't see it inside the tire. So when you go back to the dealer and say, hey, I want a new tire, there's no such thing as a shifted belt in the tire, there's a manufacturing defect, I want it replaced. Push the issue, I guarantee it, they will take the tire back and replace it. So, I hope you've enjoyed this exciting information about tires. This is Peter from Cars and Guitars. If you have any questions, you'd like to know more about tires or anything else, please let me know. Here's my phone number. Hope to see you soon.